Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and I'm one of those that likes to iron. So today I'm going to share some of my personal favorite tips on ironing while quilting, and I'm going to be using my new Alisso iron. So today I am using the Alisso Smart Iron, and it's model TJ1600 Pro Plus. So this is the iron that with just a touch, it goes down and back up. So the feet go up and down with our hand touching. This up and down motion is a great saver of the wrist. Traditional irons, we iron and then we have to pick the heavy iron up and put it upright. Grab it and put it down. So we're always using this motion. And that can be a lot of pressure on our wrists. This iron, we don't need to pick it up. We just need to start ironing and then let it go so it has its own surface. And this makes it safe so that if the iron does tip over or we do forget to lift it up, it doesn't matter. The feet keep it up for us. The iron will turn off in 30 minutes if we don't touch it. So that's another great safety feature. The other great safety feature is this really long cord. It's a 12 foot cord, which is great because we should not use an extension cord when we are using an iron. Now what's different with this new iron is the sole plate. It has a special coating on it. It's a diamond ceramic coating. It is very smooth to iron with. It almost glides over top of the fabric. And that plate makes it easier for cleanup. The thing that builds up the most on the iron is starch. And I'll show you my other iron. So this iron I have used for oh, over two years. It still works. It's fine. But over a couple of weeks, you can see that I get this brown buildup. It's not glue, it's not melted fabric, it's starch. I've used this iron for about three months and I have not had to clean it. So here's the difference between a stainless steel plate and the ceramic plate. And let me explain why we end up with this starch buildup. It doesn't matter if we're using a starch or a starch alternative. What we're doing is spraying this surface and then we're ironing. How we get that starch buildup is we haven't given time for that starch or that product to soak into those fibers. So it's just sitting on the top. And when it's sitting on the top as we're ironing it, some of it is going to go in with the heat of the iron, but the rest of it is going to go on the plate of the iron because it hasn't had a chance to soak into those fibers. So to keep the iron surface clean, we need to wait a second and let that fiber pull in that moisture. Then we can press. Not only does it keep the iron clean, but it does set the seams better because it is soaking in right to the other side. I often do not wait for that starch to soak into the fabric so there are times that I do need to clean the sole. So after you're done your ironing for the day, just get a wet towel and iron that wet. Steam is also an important thing for an iron. I do love using my steam. We have three different steam settings and then a little area right along this side, which means no steam. We can still have water in here, but that will turn off the steam. And we have a steam button and a spray button if we do need to wet some fabric. This little door opens up so that we can put water into this water tank. And it is over 12 ounces of water that we can put in here. The easiest way to fill irons, I use a watering can. That spout in the watering can makes it really easy to dump my water in until I get to my right level. And in the meanwhile, I can water my plants. The water that I use inside of the iron 
is just plain old tap water. We need the minerals in our tap water to produce steam. So this has been designed to keep that in mind so we don't have a mineral buildup. We get the minerals to work towards our advantage to help our steam. The only time you wouldn't use tap water is if your water is extremely hard. I can steam upright if I want to steam curtains or something that is hanging up like a shirt on a hanger. And of course, we can always steam while we're ironing. When we have these big wrinkles in our fabric, steam works really well, but the little spray that the water comes out also helps because we want to get that soft, moist, and relaxed. So I can use that spray to wet the seam, regardless if it's down or I want to control it, and now press. It's important that we are taking those fibers and just pulling them a little bit so that the wrinkle on the top gets pushed down. So you can smooth with your hand, give it some steam or a spray, and that will help those wrinkles come out. I'd like to share with you my favorite tip for when I've sewn these long strips together. When sewing long strips together, the feed dogs on the bottom and the foot on the top will sometimes make the fabric kind of go into a curve. Well, there is a way we can correct that curve and it is all with the iron and a straight line on our ironing surface. So this is the seam that I want to press. So I'm going to have it go right against a straight edge. I can pull this to the position that I want and I can even put a pin there and just make sure that this seam is following a straight line. If you don't have something straight, you can line it up with a ruler. We're looking for that straight edge. So I'm lining it up, making sure it's all straight and I can feel with my hand that that seam is flat. Smooth everything out and now press just that seam. We don't need to press all of the fabric. We're just pressing where we have done that stitching. And let it cool down a little bit. Now when we pick it up, that steam has corrected that curve. I use the edge of my ironing surface for another way to press. If I need to press a seam and I know the seam beside it is going to get in the way, I use that seam that I want to press and I put it on the edge so the part that I don't want to press is overlapped or hanging off. So this seam has already been pressed, so it's hanging off of the ironing surface. The only thing on the ironing surface is this area that I want to press. So now I know I'm going to be able to press that and not worry about that seam. And when that seam is done, give it a test and make sure that we have not stretched it out of shape. If so, line that back up and now we can give a good press. Those long strips are staying straight, the seams are not having any overlaps, and we've only pressed the seam that we've needed to press. Now my last tip is when I go to leave the room. The iron is designed for us to leave it this way which sometimes means I can't remember if I've turned it on or off. So as soon as I've turned the iron off, I leave it in the upright position. It's unplugged and off when it's in this position. So at a glance, when I go to leave my sewing room, I look at the iron. If it's this way, it means I haven't unplugged it yet and I do not want to leave it plugged in. If it's sitting up like this, I know I've already done it. I do hope those tips and techniques have helped you all while learning about the new Oliso iron.
Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.